Hey guys, welcome back to Thesis Body and Mind. I've got another quick video for you today, following along my sort of recent theme on strength and size, uh, increasing it, maintaining it, all that good stuff. Had a lot of questions about this recently. Uh, so the thing that I want to cover, the kind of area that I want to cover today is this idea that more isn't necessarily more when it comes to building strength, uh, gaining muscle, okay? And what I mean by this really is specifically talking about two things, the time that you spend in the gym and the time that you spend out of the gym. So just give you an example of what I'm talking about, okay? I frequently go to the gym and without sounding like a dick, <laughs> uh, I'll quite often be one of the better shaped people in there and I'll be coming in and leaving out in the same time that most of the people that were in there when I got there are still there. All right? And this is because over the years I've become very good at using the time that I'm in the gym efficiently and I understand what I need to do to provide the stimulus to get the adaptation I want without having to spend hours and hours in the gym every time. Okay, now for a lot of you guys out there, time is a very precious commodity. For me, it certainly is. So this has been something that I've always uh, been trying to develop, okay? How can I get in the gym, provide the stimulus that I want to provide the adaptation that I want to achieve in the shortest time possible. Sometimes I like to go to the gym and just hang out in the gym for ages because it's therapeutic for me, I enjoy it. Um, but a lot of the time, I, I don't have the time to do that, yeah? So, uh, like most of you out there, I want the results uh, kind of more than I want to be in the gym, so that's that's kind of what we're talking about. Okay, so first of all, uh, we can whittle this down to the most kind of basic principle behind achieving the results that we want in terms of strength and size, which is the overload principle, okay? So for those who aren't really aware of this, quite simply, the overload principle uh, is a principle that when you exert yourself beyond what you normally would uh, by, for example, lifting a load more than you normally would for an increased number of reps than you normally would do, you trigger a response for the body to adapt in a way that makes doing that easier the next time you do it. Okay, so a classic example would be doing a bench press for as many reps of, uh, as you can for a weight that's quite heavy for you, and the next time, say next week, uh, you come to do the bench press, Ideally, if you've provided that response effectively and your recovery, which we're going to talk about in a second, has been adequate, okay, you should have provided the adaptation, physical adaptation, that will now allow you to lift that same weight for more reps or lift a little bit more weight than you could do before, all right? Pretty standard stuff, okay? But this very basic principle can get easily forgotten or overwhelmed by all the other overcomplicated, misleading information that is now out there, the bro science that's getting passed around the gym. All right, we need to just bring everything back to these core fundamentals sometimes and remember that it's kind of as simple as, as we want to make it in a lot of ways. Okay, so the overload principle, we don't need to spend two or three hours in the gym at a time. We definitely, if we're not able to get those strength and size gains that we're looking for in the time that we're hoping for, don't need to be hitting the same muscle groups three or four times a week every week in an effort to try and stimulate that adaptation, right? That is not where you're going wrong, I promise you, okay? Um, so, the point of all this waffle is that we need to make the time we're in the gym efficient, okay? Once you've triggered that uh, once you've elicited the overload principle, you've provided that stimulus, you've triggered that adaptation, you're done. Right? This can be done in as little as five sets, you know, three, three to five sets uh, performed well on any given exercise. Okay. So the second thing I want to talk about, the overload principle leads on to recovery. Okay. The adaptation is not going to happen if you're always in the gym trying to make that adaptation, trying to provide the stimulus to create the response, all right? The response can only happen in the time that you're out of the gym, providing yourself with that recovery phase, all right? So again, we don't need to be spending hours in the gym when we're in there, and we don't need to be coming straight back to work the same muscle groups again the next day, the next day, and the next day after that. So in a nutshell, what we're really getting at here, basically if time is precious for you, 
There's no need for you to be spending hours and hours every time, uh, days and days in the gym, hitting the same muscle groups three or four times a week. Doesn't need to happen, okay? Um, what we wanna be looking at, all right, if you're trying to be efficient with your time, trying to make the best use, you've only got a few sessions a week to get to the gym, or you can get there every day, but you've got 30 or 40 minutes, ideally, that you wanna spend before you're home to the family, out with friends, whatever it might be that you're doing with the rest of your time. Okay, we can easily look at providing all the stimulus you need to gain strength, muscle in as little as two to three sessions a week uh, as long as that program is intelligently planned uh, and the overload principle is provided and then the rest of the time that you're not in the gym guess what the adaptation from the stimulus is what's happening uh, so my challenge to you then if uh, if this is in line with what you're kind of hoping to hoping to get out of your program okay spending a little bit less time in the gym but getting the maximum results uh, is to look at the schedule you've got, okay? Think about how many times a week you're hitting each area that you're hoping to train and try and stream that, that down to once or twice a week maximum for each body part, okay? And then over the next couple of weeks, uh, I want you to get in and out of the gym in the quickest time you can, minimize those rest periods, right? Maximize the amount of volume that you're getting done in the shortest time possible that you want to be in there, get back out, Give yourself a day off before the next one, as few sessions as you can, and see how you feel. All right? The only uh, caveat that I have to this is that, particularly if you, if you are already making the effort to track your nutrition, which hopefully you are at some level at least, or you've already got a good idea of, of exactly what you're, what you're consuming, okay, is that by training less, you are going to impact your caloric requirement for each day all right so you're going to have to bear that in mind is the only is the only thing i will say on top of that okay um but switch up the stimulus if you want to burn the calories get some low level aerobic uh, activity in there or something else it's going to provide a slightly different stimulus get you burning calories and if anything helps speed up your recovery rather than just compromising the gains that you're going to make uh by hitting the same workouts again and again all right because that's not going to help all right, so that's my challenge to you. Uh, leave some comments, uh, any ideas that you've got that you want to share with anyone else. And if there's any questions, feel free to fire away. I'll be more than happy to get back to you.